250 shaped <laughs> charges, that, they're like little explosive charges that fire bullets out in, through the casing. And importing 250 shaped charges into Somalia uh, <coughs> takes a little bit of uh, uh, paperwork. So we're working through that now, and uh, um, we should have that uh, ready by the time we drill this well. But I think the good news is we think we found, um, and I, I, I can't tell you this number, but our partner has reported that uh, they think it's 75 to 130 million barrels of recoverable oil. Um, and uh, I won't argue with our partner. Um, you know, those, those numbers were, were we, we, we have reviewed those numbers. Um, but we have to flow the oil first. When the oil flows out of the well, when and if it flows out, um, I think we have probably a, a, an economic development. You know, the good news about uh, this, this block here is it's the easiest one physically for us to develop. It's only about 60 kilometers from the coast to a deep water port along a blacktop highway. So as far as just being able to get oil to market, this is going to be the easiest one we've got in the portfolio. Um, obviously, um, Somalia, we hope the uh, constitutional referendum works out and they, they, they get their resource uh, law in place, uh, which will be a holdup. But um, if we have, I think, 100 million barrels, say, in, in this prospect and another 100 million in this prospect, we certainly have a commercial development. I think the threshold volume in Somalia is probably closer to 70 million barrels uh, to where we can start making a commercial uh, viable project. So I guess the bottom line on Somalia and Horn is I'm extremely encouraged. I mean, we found good reservoirs. We found a, a working petroleum system. We found some good seals. We found the deeper objective that we can pursue in other parts of the basin. And I'm actually quite encouraged. I've, I'm, I'm a little surprised at uh, how much the uh, shares went down this, this past week uh, after we put out our press release. But I guess once we flow oil, I think that will be corrected. I think people, people will start re-looking at this. Uh, and we'll use the word discovery, but uh, again, I caution everybody, until we flow oil, uh, it's, not, it's not a done deal. I do want to spend some time about talking about community development, community relations. Uh, you know, I think there's been a lot of press uh, here in Sweden, particularly about Lundin Group and how they manage themselves overseas. Uh, I, I've been with the Lundin Group for 15 years, and I'm very proud of the, the record we've had. I worked in Sudan with Lundin, I worked in yeah, Ethiopia, and... <laughs> Uh, having worked for Shell Oil, having worked with Occidental Petroleum, I think we, we conduct ourselves at, at a standard higher than, than industry. You know, and the reason is not only just being altruistic, the reason there's business reasons to do it. You know, we, we, people ask how we operate in these difficult areas. 90% of it is this. If, if we get in, make relations with local people, treat them with respect, show them that they're going to have immediate benefit from us, show them that they're going to have longer benefit if we're there in terms of jobs and development, um, and they want us to be there, that's the number one security you can do. But we spend about a half a million dollars a year on community development. We work on projects like food security, um, um, doing, doing uh, livestock, veterinary, agricultural projects, sustainable type projects. In the past two years, we've focused a lot on water. There's been a massive drought in the Horn of Africa, so we've done a lot of water projects. Uh, building catchments, drilling water wells for villages, um, health, um, we, we re rebuilding clinics, uh, doing vaccinations for children, uh, working on uh, um, um, you know, intensive care units in, in local hospitals, and education. We have a bursary fund. Uh, we, we, we redo schools. You don't have to spend a lot of money to uh, make a, a significant impact. You know, one of my favorite projects is this one here. We call it our One Child, One Light Project. So these lights, these are solar lights. They only cost about a dollar each. Uh, the children here, unlike some of our children, really want to go to school and really want to study. Uh, and when they come back, they, many of them walk five, 10 miles to school in the morning and five, 10 miles back. And when they come home uh, at the equator, it's dark at six o'clock, so they, they can't study. You take one of these solar lights, leave it out in the sun all day, it gives you three hours of light at night. So we've handed out 20,000 of these to children in the villages uh, where we're working, and they can come home, sit for three hours, and have light to study. And, they, and uh, um, not only do we have 20,000 happy children, we've got 40,000 happy parents who are seeing their kids studying and, and, and staying out of their hair a bit, I think. Uh, so the, uh, you know, you don't have to, this is like for $20,000 we've done this, you don't have to spend huge amounts of money. 
This is our solar cooker program. As I said, deforestation is a big problem there. Uh, these are about $75 each. You give those to the village, they can boil water, cook rice, boil, um, cook food in these. And again, the one commodity they have a lot in this area is sunshine. So again, a sustainable type development. You know, to, uh, this is actually the Swedish ambassador in Ethiopia awarding us a plaque for our efforts down in Hagen. So I don't think I would believe everything you read in the newspapers here. Um, why we're here, of course, is this is one of the few places on Earth you can find multi-billion barrel oil fields onshore with good contract terms. I mean, there just aren't that many basins like this left uh, on Earth. Um, if you look at this, this is our, our third party report, which is done by Gap and Klein. This study is 18 months old and doesn't take into account three of our primary blocks, which is 13T, where most of that string of pearls is, 12A and uh, South Omo. So, um, we are redoing it now. These numbers will probably go up significantly. They possibly could double um, because obviously like 10 dB, we've got six times as much pay as we thought we had. So this number is going to go up. And when we add in the others, I think you're going to see a, a fairly big increase. But having said that, it's already a pretty big number. 11.5 billion barrels of recoverable resources is, is, is one of the bigger ones that I've, I've been involved in. If you multiply that by our working interest, it's about 5.3 billion net to us. So these are fairly subjective reports. I mean, if you give them to five different agencies, they'll give you a range. But, um, the, the bottom line is these are all of these, with possibly the exception of the Ogden Basin, are really multi-billion barrel type of, of targets. Um, so people ask me, uh, what are these barrels worth? So I think first you take that 5.3 billion, you have to put a, a, a risk factor. So if you put, uh, we think about 20% chance of success is, is a reasonable chance of success. So that would suggest about a billion barrels net to us on a risk basis. Then you say, what, are the, what, what can you get for these barrels? There's the, the most, probably the most compelling transaction is right near us in Uganda, where Heritage sold its interest to uh, Tullo for about uh, $1.5 billion, which put a value of about $4.23 a barrel. Frankly, I think our Kenya stuff is going to be worth significantly more than that. The contract terms are much better. The pipeline required is about half the distance. I think it's probably worth more like 6 or $7 in Kenya. But um, if you just use that number, multiply it by that, you see our target is about $4.5 billion of, of kind of risk value. Um, this, the, you may have seen uh, one of our best promotion right now is Tullo. Everybody's looking at Tullo and, and doing an analysis on Tullo. Um, Merrill Lynch just gave them a, a four pound per share value on their Kenya holdings, which we hold pretty much exactly identical. Uh, if you, if you, if you uh, multiply that out, it's about a five and a half billion dollar value that Merrill Lynch has put on there, similar to what we're having. So our market cap now is about 1.7 billion, um, obviously significantly below this. Um, and uh, you know, you might think uh, that type of increase sounds a little un unreasonable, but uh, Lucas Lundin tells me if, uh, if we only make 10 times our money on Africa oil, we're going to be the biggest slacker in the group. Um, the average share price is about, the price increase is about 29 times our money. I think uh, Lundin Petroleum is about 60 times your money um, with their, their big discovery they've made uh, recently in the, in the North Sea. But we've had a number of, of very good successes. Tanganyika, Valkyries were two companies I started. Again, went from about 17 million market cap to almost 3 billion. 50 cents a share to 16 and 31 dollars respectively. Um, uh, Lundy Petroleum, I think, is one of our best success cases. You know, finding that in the middle of the North Sea, uh, nine billion dollars of, uh, of value created, and I think most most importantly on that, only 50 million dollars of equity was raised to, to do that. So it was all done with internal growth. Uh, my hats off to uh, Ashley Heffenstall and the, and the group in Geneva. Uh, Black Pearl and Chamron are still still in uh, um, still working. Black Pearl, I think, has, uh, has done a very good job and created value. Chamron has been a bit more of a struggle. Um, I think what's killed Chamron is uh, is the geology has been much more difficult. I think we talked about Chamron last time I was here, where I said the geology geological risk is almost zero. It's all about politics. Well, the politics is still bad, but uh, the geology didn't support us. So we've had to give up two of our blocks in Chamaran because of the geology not uh, being uh, uh, credible, including the Pocana field, which was supposed to be our, 
our lead pipe cinch, uh, no risk uh, venture. So I think my bo the bottom line here is that you know no one's going to tell you there's not risk. I mean, what you don't get these types of returns without taking risk. Uh, you know, and I'd say right now I would call us, uh, we can't really count Redback, Redback's a mining company, just such a good deal, I couldn't help throwing it in there. But the, uh, um, you know, I, I would say we're pretty much five, four out of five uh, on the oil companies, uh, five out of six if you count uh, Africa Oil. So I think we've got a very good uh, track record, and I think the, uh, uh, it's all about risk and reward. You know, there's technical risk here, there's political risk here, particularly in Somalia. Um, there's uh, uh, execution risk. There's risks that the host governments who are very friendly to us now before we find oil may be a little less friendly when we start finding big oil. So all of those risks are here. But the reason we're here is risk versus return. I think that's where the Lundin family has done a very good job uh, over the years uh, making creating value for their shareholders. And I have to say I've been involved in every one of these oil companies and Africa Oil is the best one of these that I've seen so far. So, as I said, it's early days, but I have to say the, uh, the excitement level that we see in Africa Oil is, uh, is, is one of the best we've seen, uh, the best I've seen in my career. The well we're drilling now is the best well I've ever drilled in my career. The uh, Tullow boys uh, say it's the best well they've ever drilled. Um, so um, it is exciting and it, it is getting us excited. I think we've got a great acreage position. I think, as I said, this is just the beginning. Uh, we're going to be drilling up to 10 to, 10 to 12 wells a year from, from, from this point on. We'll have four rigs working nonstop as of September uh, for the foreseeable future. Uh, we've got a good team of people, people that we've worked with in Valkyries, Tanganyika, London Petroleum, and others uh, that uh, for staffing, and, a, and an excellent partner, partner in Tullo. And I think uh, we see eye to eye with Tullo, and I think we see staying in this project. I think what you see in some of the other London companies is we kind of build and sell, build and sell. I think this one's big enough and attractive enough that we have the intention to stay in and actually go into production on this. I think what we've found in the North Sea with London Petroleum is that we're not necessarily afraid of going down that path into production now. And I think Africa Oil will be one that I, that I think we're going to be in for several uh, years minimum and, and possibly forever. Um, again, I think it's going to take about 10 to 12 wells to just figure out what we've got, uh, how big this thing could be. Uh, we have m money for about half of that, so we're going to have to do something to raise the, the money for the rest, um, probably towards the end of this year, early next year. Um, and of course, we've always got the family standing behind us. Uh, you know, there is argument to take the money now when people, people are offering it to us, uh, but I think with uh, the amount of good news potentially to come, um, uh, and with the, the fact that if we don't drill some great wells, and if the market goes south, we always have the Lundin family to fall back on. I think we're going to wait until, to, to raise money until um, the end of this year. So anyway, I think a great start, and uh, uh, I think we've got a good group of people, that, uh, uh, including Gary Gidry, who some of you may have known from the Tanganyika days, um, and Ian Gibbs, who was Tang Tanganyika and Valkyries. So I think, uh, I think it's, a, it's a bright future, and uh, I will leave you to uh, ponder the uh, cautionary statements uh, on your own time. Thanks. Some questions, if anybody. Go ahead. Yeah, we've actually. I don't know. If, have we publicly said we 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 surrendered Mali? And we 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 sent a letter to the government surrendering Mali. It was bad geology, and now it's really bad politics. Yeah, I mean, we shot seismic there, and there was nothing of interest, and uh, uh, the country itself is in is in pretty rough shape now. So, all the Tuaregs that went to go fight with Gaddafi all came back from Libya with their automatic weapons. And it's not a, not a very good uh, okay. I would not recommend uh, holidaying in uh, Mali right now. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? Yeah? It's me again. Yeah. Uh, you, you talked about four rigs. Yeah. You? yeah. I, I suppose you've got the Saxon, the Rome Ford, and the Weather Ford. What's the four? Uh, four? So we got two Saxons. We got the one in Somalia and one that's coming to Block 10A for Pi Pi, and then we got the uh, um, Weatherford.